block of mass 10 kg is placed at a distance of 5 meters from the rear end of a long trolley as shown. The coefficient of friction between the block and the trolley is 0.2. Guys, you have a trolley which is being maintained, maintained at an acceleration of 3 meter per second squared towards left as shown. Who is maintaining it? I don't know. I don't care. Some external agent must be doing that. What's given to me is that this 3 meter per second square acceleration of the trolley is constant towards the left hand side in ground frame. Okay. Now, let's say it also starts from rest. That's also given to us. What is the motion of the block 10 kg as seen from the ground or as seen from the trolley? You take your pick. Easier way to describe is actually from the trolley frame. From the trolley frame, the 10 kg has a tendency to slip back. Why? Same thing. The coin in the cardboard. Who is the coin? 10 kg is the coin. Who is the cardboard? The trolley is the cardboard. If I pull the cardboard towards, then the tendency of the coin is to slip back off. Tendency. What happens in reality is a combination of many factors. I am talking about tendency. Question is, what is the distance travelled by the trolley from the starting point which is now when the block falls off? In other words, I am about to translate this language into a more useful quantitative language. In the meantime, the block slides back and eventually falls down. In the same time, how much does the trolley move? That means who is the key parameter which will relate these two movements? The key parameter is time. I'll repeat the question. In the time, in the time taken by the 10 kg block to slip back and fall, in that same time, how much does the trolley go forward? Do you realize time is independent of the frame choice? That means I can find the time from one frame and keep it in the other. Let's start the question now. Before I go ahead, the direction of friction part. The direction of friction part is very simple. The trolley is being pulled leftwards. The 10 kg block gets a tendency to fall backwards. Hence, the friction on 10 kg block will act this way. And the friction will act this way. Do you realize I am not putting the symbol S or K? Can you notice why? Because I am not sure whether slipping takes place or not. If the slipping takes place, I will put kinetic. If they don't slip, I will put static. However, I know if they don't slip, the question doesn't have any meaning. But still, no leap of faith without substantiating the data. Alright. Let's go in the trolley frame. I am in the trolley frame. That means the observer stands on the trolley and looks at the 10 kg block. Always start with your strength. First, the weight mg. The weight mg, the normal reaction. Pseudo force, why? Because the trolley has an acceleration. So there is a pseudo force to the right hand side. And the friction, what is pseudo force equal to? Pseudo force is equal to 10 times, 10 times 3 which is equal to 30. Friction coefficient is actually given to you as 0.2. So first, can you find out the Fs max? If you find out the Fs max, Fs max is equal to mu n. Mu n and mu n here will become equal to mu mg. 0.2 multiplied by mg. mg is 100. Right? 100 into 0.2 is equal to 20. Is pseudo force value more than the maximum friction value? Yes, sir. Do you agree the sliding will take place? Yes, sir. What will be the nature of friction now? Kinetic, sir. And kinetic is a fixed value equal to mu k n. Since there is only one mu given, mu s is 0.2. Mu k is 0.2, Fs max is 20, Fk is 20. Is the analysis fine? So you are sure 
in trolley frame, the block will have an acceleration backwards. Let that acceleration be A. Lot of information on this page, 30 seconds, take your time, easily, divide and rule. Did you understand my analysis, why friction will act? I found out FS max compared, check. <clears throat> Convinced? Sure? Okay. So, the pseudo force MA0 is equal to 30. I'll, I'll, I'll find the value again. Are you satisfied with the free body diagram now? Why FK, FK is acting? Okay. So, the block has to travel 5 meter to fall off the trolley. That means I need the value of A now. How do I need, how do I find the value of A? First, I find the value of A by MA0 minus FK is equal to MA and N is equal to MG. Let's put the values. MA0, MA0 is 10 times 3, 30. FK, FK you just found out is 0.2 times MG, 100 is equal to 10 A. 30 minus 20 is equal to 10 A, which I did before. And A is 1 meter per second square. Any questions, anyone? Anyone? 1 meter per second square. Guys, is this acceleration constant? Oh yes, absolutely it's constant. If it's constant, am I eligible to apply the equation of motion x equal to ut plus half a t square? Yes. That means in the trolley frame, how much block has to travel? 5 meters. The displacement is 5. Initial speed, 0, because everything was at rest to begin with. Half, acceleration is 1, and t square. That implies t square is equal to 10, and t is equal to root 10 seconds. It means the block starts slipping, slips for 5 meters, and loses contact with the trolley in root 10 seconds. And you need to find out how much should the trolley traveled in this root 10 seconds. That's very simple again. This time, apply x equal to ut plus half ad square on the trolley. Look at the trolley, but what frame you are in now? Ground frame. But sir, you found out root 10 seconds in trolley frame. Why will you use that value of time in ground frame? Come on, for the hundredth time. Time does not depend on the frame. This time x trolley. Um, equation is x equal to ut plus half ad square. So for trolley, x is ut plus half ad square. Initial is 0. x trolley. Let it be xt. What is the acceleration of trolley? 3. And what is the time? Root 10 square. What is root 10 square? 10. 10 into 3 by 2. You have a 30 upon 2 situation which is equal to 15 meters. Or the distance covered by the trolley in ground frame in that time when the block slips off of it is 15 meter final answer. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.